We're going to use countertop epoxy resin to create an awesome lava effect on this simple MDF board. This is going to be a real high contrast finish with some bright yellows and reds to create a swirling fire below. And then we're going to use some darker resin to create some defined areas for coals or rocks around the outside. I think this is going to be a really high impact piece. Uh, so let's get started. We've mixed up 150 grams of Stone Coat's countertop epoxy and we've split that into three batches. So we've got two base colours. This first one is with yellow pearlescent. And we're just decanting a small area and then spreading it out so it kind of forms like the, the brightest area at the centre of our piece. So just using a mixing stick to spread out some swirls from the centre. Now this has got dark red metallic in. So I'm just pouring this in to fill in the gaps in the areas where we haven't got our pearlescent yellow. And now I'm just using a mixing stick, first to make sure all the areas are covered. And I'm being careful not to drag too much onto my yellow colour at this stage. I just want to make sure my board is covered. And now we're going to start to work the colours into each other. So I'm just cutting a few streaks of the red across the yellow beginning to blend those edges out. The more time that goes on these colours are going to run into each other but we're just giving them a little help trying to create a natural looking effect. So now we're really starting to drag the yellow colour out across the red. And we're using broader strokes as we go. It's important not to overwork these colours. We don't want to end up with a big kind of mid-colour splodge. We want to keep some distinct areas but just blend the colours together so they look natural. So this is our third colour going on. This is Coffee Metallics. So I've kept this back as an accent colour. We're just adding this on at the surface to add a little bit more interest to the board. It's kind of a mid-tone between the bright yellow and the red colour. So creating some streaks with this one. Next we're coming in with a much darker mix of epoxy and this one was mixed earlier. I mixed a, a small batch about an hour before the others and added some black dye to it because I wanted it to be a lot thicker when it goes on. I don't want it to spread into the other colours loads. I wanted it to form little distinct areas. So it's not so thick that it won't level but it's thick enough that it kind of retains its shape a bit more. So we're putting it on in sections all at once and now I'm going in with a stick and just maneuvering the edges so that they don't look too rounded like little pools I want them to look like they've got hard edges to them so we take each one in turn and just drag the edges out now on a brush I've got a little bit of our coffee metallics and then we'll go in with a little bit of the red color just to highlight the surface I don't want them to be completely black on the top I want them to look like they've got a little bit of colour shape to them. So we're just adding a little bit of colour into the centre of each one. Now we're going back in with our coffee metallics. I just wanted to use this to hint at maybe some rocks that are further along the process of, of melting. And it will just help to soften the edge of where the black rocks finish and the lighter colours begin. So just same process, just creating some small pools and then dragging the edges out. To add a bit of interest to these ones, I've added a tiny amount of black colour and just carefully dragged that out on the surface. Now we're just spritzing the surface with some isopropyl alcohol to pop any air bubbles that might be trapped in the epoxy. Once that layer is all set, we can sand back with fine grit sandpaper, clean with some more isopropyl alcohol. And now we're doing our clear coat. So just clear countertop epoxy, we're pouring to the center, spreading out with a notch trowel, and then with a brush, removing any trowel marks by just giving a gentle press into the surface. If the areas of your black rocks haven't quite self-leveled, then this coat will smooth everything out. And a final spritz of isopropyl alcohol to remove any remaining air bubbles. 
here's our finished lava board. I had an idea in my head about how this might look when we started, and it's really come out exactly as I imagined. We always like to tweak and change the way that we use the epoxy just to see what different effects that we can get. In the case of this one, using that darker epoxy when it was a lot thicker, when it really started to set, has given a really good contrast between the really nice blends in the pearlescent yellow and the red into these really defined kind of coal areas where you have a much stronger edge to it. We've just put a little bit of colour on top of those areas so that it doesn't look too harsh, you don't have just plain black bits on top. It's always amazing how so few components, so we've got our metallics here and our black dye, so few components give such a detailed finish. It looks like we've spent hours working this with a brush and adding all those details. You get so much kind of free when you use these materials and just let them do their thing. We're going to do loads more boards like this in the future, so if there's anything that you'd really like to see, just drop a comment on this video and let us know, and we'll see what we can do on a future video. We've used Stone Coat's countertop epoxy and some metallic powders and pigment. As always, everything is available from worktopresin.co.uk, and we'll see you for the next board.